Hi, this is Dr. Ketu. I am board certified in internal medicine and gastroenterology practicing in the USA. If you have noticed yourself gradually putting on belly fat over the years and if you blame it on getting older or family genetics, it's important to take a closer look. These assumptions might feel harmless, but they can actually hide a much more serious health risk, particularly for South Asians. The so-called harmless Indian pot belly is not harmless at all. It's a sign of something much deeper and more dangerous, especially if you're a South Asian. This video is going to change how you look at that belly. We will talk about what it really is, why it's dangerous, when you should start worrying and how to fix it. And by the end, I will explain a hidden fat syndrome called TOFI, TOFI, thin outside, fat inside, that affects even those who appear thin and lean. Most people haven't even heard of it. If you find straightforward evidence-based health talk useful, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into it. Let's start with something you have probably noticed. In India, the part belly used to be almost like a status symbol, especially in rural areas. It meant you're well-fed, comfortable, maybe even prosperous. Even now, when I go back to India, they think that I'm malnourished because I don't have a part belly. In movies and cartoons, part belly became the official look of lazy uncles and snack-loving politicians. But now it is nothing to laugh about as it's turning into a silent killer. According to a 2021 report, India had the second highest number of overweight or obese adults. That's about 180 million people. By 2050, the Lancet Journal estimates this could hit 450 million. That's nearly one in three Indians. Globally, more than half of all adults and a third of children and adolescents are expected to face the same fate. The real villain in this story is abdominal obesity or visceral fat. Not just general fat, but belly fat specifically. Let me explain. Abdominal obesity means fat stored around your waist. According to Indian guidelines, that's a waist size over 90 centimeters or 35 inches for men and 80 centimeters or 31 inches for women. And it's shockingly common. You measure waist size by putting tape just above the belly button not around your belt line where you wear the belt. National Family Health Survey, NFHS 5, showed that 40% of Indian women and 12% of men have abdominal obesity. Among women aged 30 to 49, nearly one in two already show signs of it. In urban areas, those numbers are even higher. What's scary is that this is not just cosmetic. This belly fat wraps around your organs, your liver, your pancreas, your intestines. We call it visceral fat. This fat is considered as a separate organ, biologically active, and it messes up how your body uses insulin. It is one of the main drivers of insulin resistance, which is basically when your body stops responding to insulin and your blood sugar goes up. That's a shortcut to type 2 diabetes. And that's just the beginning. It's also linked to heart disease, high blood pressure, fatty liver, and even some cancers. And here is where TOFI comes in, thin outside and fat inside. This means someone who looks lean can still have high levels of hidden visceral fat. So your normal BMI doesn't mean you're safe. That's why waist circumference matters more. Now here is where it gets interesting. South Asians, yes, that includes Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Nepalese, Sri Lankans, etc have a unique fat pattern. At the same BMI, South Asians tend to have more body fat than white Europeans, and our fat cells are larger and less efficient at storing fat. So instead of keeping fat safely under the skin, our bodies push it into organs like the liver and pancreas. That's like storing explosives in the kitchen instead of the garage. It's going to blow up sooner or later. And this happens even in people who look skinny. You might have normal weight, but you may have dangerous levels of visceral fat. That's why belly fat in South Asians is such a strong predictor of metabolic disease. And here is something that might blow your mind. There is an evolutionary theory behind this. For centuries, India went through repeated famines 
our bodies adapted to store every extra calories, especially around the belly because it's the most expandable area. That was useful in the old days when there was real famine. But today, when food is everywhere and we move less, it becomes harmful. That's why obesity-related diseases hit South Asians at uh, younger ages and lower weights than in Western populations. That is the reason Indian doctors have moved beyond BMI to focus on waist size and fat distribution. They use a two-stage system. Stage one is high BMI without belly fat or health problems, usually managed with diet, exercise, and sometimes medications. Stage two is when you have abdominal obesity, often with diabetes, knee pain, or heart symptoms. This stage means higher risk and calls for more aggressive treatment, including new weight loss drugs called GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic and etc. So how do we treat it? First is daily habits, not just diet and exercise, but timing, quality, and sleep too. Number one is walk for 30 to 60 minutes daily, ideally after meals. Post-meal walking reduces blood sugar spikes and improves insulin sensitivity. Even 10 minutes after each meal adds up. Number two, strength training twice a week. Helps maintain muscle mass, which boosts metabolism and burns more fat, especially in older adults. Number three, cut refined carbs. White rice, white bread, sweets, and packaged snacks. Replace them with millets, whole grains, or legumes. Avoid deep fried foods. Number four is adding high fiber, low sugar vegetables like spinach, okra, gourds, cauliflower, cabbage, etc. They keep you full, slows glucose absorption, and feed your gut bacteria. Number five is time restricted eating. Eat your meals within a 10 to 12 hour window, say 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Studies show this improves metabolic flexibility. Check out my video on time-restricted eating right here. Now, number six, prioritize sleep. Seven to eight hours of consistent sleep helps regulate cortisol and insulin. Poor sleep is linked to more visceral fat. Number seven, track your waist once a month. Use a soft measuring tape around your belly button. If you're gaining centimeters, it's a sign before your blood sugar even raises. Number eight, Limit ultra-processed foods, packaged snacks, chips, instant noodles. These raise inflammation and confuse your hunger signals. Number nine, consider adding a probiotic yogurt or fermented food like homemade curd or kanji once a day. A healthy gut helps regulate body fat distribution. In more severe cases, medications like GLP-1 agonists are showing promising results, especially in targeting belly fat and improving insulin resistance. But none of this works without awareness. That's why I'm telling you, don't wait until your blood sugar goes off the charts or your doctor finds fatty liver. If you have belly fat, especially if your waistline is over that 90 centimeters in men or 80 centimeter cutoff in women, it's time to act. And hey, I get it. Sometimes that belly is just years of biryani talking. But if your belly enters the room before you do, it's not just a fashion problem, it's a health emergency. If this video made sense, hit like and subscribe for more straight talk, science-backed health videos. Share with friends, and family, someone you know probably needs to hear this. And tell me in the comments, which of these facts or techniques surprised you the most? Have you tried anything that helped with this or have questions about other health topics? Drop them below. I read every single one of them. Thank you for watching.